Hello, and welcome to another Franchise Hockey Manager 3 stream. My name is Adam. I'm the Community Manager of Franchise Hockey. With me, as always, is FHM producer Jeff, who is pictured on your screen. Hey, everybody. Say hi, Jeff. And we are back with a 2016-2017 Toronto Maple Leaf stream, and we are in February? We are in February, and we are not doing too well, unfortunately. Uh, we... Just getting back to the schedule... Uh... Finished, la finished up last week with a 4-1 loss, but we're well below 500 at this point and about 13 points out of a playoff spot. On the uh, other hand, we did just finally get Joffrey Lupo back. So uh, he's going to have a huge influence on the outcome of the season, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> I think well, the over under of getting injured within a week or so is about... Weren't we going to try and trade him? Did, I, did that come up? Uh, I think we tried, but uh, or maybe not. We did. We did make a trade uh, last week uh, for Jacob Voracek. So I right. got the lineup set, and I think uh, where are we on? Voracek's our number one left winger. Yep, uh, and we've got the Islanders today at home. Last game of this homestand, which hasn't really worked out that well. So let's fire this up and see how the new lineup works. Well, if memory serves, we traded for Voracek fairly early on, but it did not work out well to begin with. We were getting uh, destroyed. It wasn't that long ago, again. but uh, he hasn't done a whole lot yet. That's, yeah, that's right. I'm just going to let this run without stoppages fast. And... Uh, I'm so this is weird looking at the screen now because I've been testing the new version, new update uh, for a few weeks, which has changed a few things here. And naturally, Andrew Ladd opens it up for the Islanders. one nothing down one nothing already. Of course. But uh, make that 2 nothing, John Tavares. Uh, we've changed a few things on this screen. The one thing you can see is the, oh, the problem with the uh, Leafs uh, name not showing up. Uh, that's going to be fixed in the update. This section here, uh, that I'm my face is partially covering up the momentum and the tactical advantage. I'm gonna have to move my picture at some point when we start a new game with that one. But uh, that has been uh, reworked slightly. It'll give you a lot more information on the exact on each of the possible tactical situations. So, oh come on, three nothing. Well, we are the lease here. It's not like we're. <sighs> Oh, uh, superstar! Turbo finally makes it three-one, so we might get a game out of this. Anyhow, the uh, it'll uh, show you the numerical scores of the exactly how much of a tactical advantage you've got in each situation. So, your offense against the other team's defense, uh, their defense against your offense, and uh, your power play against their penalty killing, and vice versa. So you'll be able to get a lot more uh, detail on exactly which areas you're beating the other team tactically and by how much. And uh, if you need to, if you want to make changes to certain things, it'll be a lot easier to see what the effects of your changes are going to be. And Voracek uh, picks it up finally, three to two. All right. And uh, among the other things, I've we I spent most of last week updating the NHL uh, ratings, so uh, Halak will not be in goal for the Islanders anymore. Uh, no, he sure had a disappointing. considerably, and I made a few changes to the Leafs as well. And a few other teams, I think. Yeah, Columbus is uh, doing a lot better now in the test games. It's amazing what some healthy bodies can do, too, as well. And 4-2. to so, Looking for problems in the game scores. Nobody's particularly bad. Martin Marincin gets his first goal of the season. About time. Uh, nobody really standing out in the uh, game stores column. Uh, I haven't really been playing loop a lot much, only three minutes so far. <laughs> Where, what line is he on? Is he on our fourth line? I got him on the fourth line now. We'll, we'll start him out very slowly. Yeah. I don't know. If Anderson had been a little better at the start of the game, we'd be even in this one. Well, we didn't get Anderson until 
November or something, right? Yeah, we had uh, the his injury was uh, a lot longer than it was in real life. Uh, he was more or less right back right from the beginning, for the, at least in real life. But in our case, he was out a couple of months longer. Four three into the second uh, tactical advantage. Don't think I'm gonna make it. Yeah. Make a small strategic change and uh, get a little more aggressive with the risk taking. Hopefully that doesn't backfire on us. And sure enough, it did. Calvin Dahan makes it five three. Excellent. Uh, just a reminder to anybody who's uh, watching, we've still got the All-Star Sale on, 50% off FHM3 for a few more days. It's, I think, uh, it's on... No, tomorrow. Well, see, yeah, it's, uh, tomorrow's the last full day. I think it, it expires something like uh, 3 in the morning on the 3rd. Okay. On Friday, which is, I'm not sure if that's specific time or which is what Steam usually works on or uh, Eastern. Okay. But if you want to be safe, buy it tomorrow. And 6-3, and it looks like this one is not worth uh, playing out, so I'm just going to sim to the end of it and spare us the uh, loss. That's out ends. 6-3 final. Game scores. Yeah. Pretty good offensive effort from us. Uh, all Zeitz have 31 defensive score, 40 overall. That's not good. Uh, Lupo, quiet game. First game back through one hit. Uh, only played about five minutes, so... I uh, just okay. could not Maybe adhere. Ramp up his playing time a little bit. Uh, I see the Steam sale ends in 30, just a little under 32 hours. Oh, they give you a counter, so. Yeah. Let's see, does that make it. Uh, so that would be. 29. So it actually, it's, you know, it's 3, yeah, 3 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. Yep. Okay, nobody interesting on waivers. We've got uh, Columbus up tomorrow. I think I'm just going to send that one. I'm going to probably start Enroth and see if that shakes us up a little. Maybe get a little bit of defensive effort if the uh, backup's in. Um, another thing I can give a few more details on now in the update, we've uh, made some really big changes to the way goaltending works. Uh -huh. uh, swapping. And for one thing, I'm not going to have to do this uh, anymore on the uh, strategy, uh, strategy screen before the game. There will be when you go into the game, the pregame screen will let you uh, let you choose your starting goalie. But in addition to that, there's now a uh, system where... Uh, do I need to do anything here? Nope. Just going to sim that. And a 5-2 loss despite us uh, shooting him, so apparently not a good idea to start him off. Uh, two big thing, big changes coming with the goalies. Uh, first one is the uh, starter system, which uh, lets you you've got a whole you've got a bunch of different criteria now to you can wait to decide who starts. So if you want to uh, start your backup a lot, you can do that. If you always want to have a different starter in back-to-back -back games, you can do that. If you only want to start one guy through the playoffs, that's an option. Uh, you've got seven different uh, sliders and five point five uh, a five point scale on each of them to determine exactly how you want to handle your goaltending. And then on top of that, you can always oh, Jet's picking up Taylor Beck. How did I miss him? Uh, you can always uh, override that at the start of the game by choosing your own goalie. And the other thing, whoa, look at that! Alex Burrows on waivers from the Canucks. Oh, that's not surprising. And we've got uh, enough salary cap space to grab them, so I am putting in a claim. What? Yeah. Come on, it's Burroughs. <laughs> I'm a Canucks fan. I like them. Uh... Oh, we we're at uh, 50 contracts, so okay, that is a problem for us. Uh, not really anything. Hmm. Not much yeah, we can not, do. I'm not going to be able to make a trade before I uh, before that waiver claim goes through. So I've got to just for the sake of being uh, having uh, 
room to maneuver in the future. I think I need to. Mm, works like maybe well, see if anybody's. We'll take him. You gonna do what, sorry? Uh, I'm gonna just try to move Brooks like for a late uh, draft pick. Let's try the Kings, maybe. Maybe put some guys on trade block too, right? Yeah, not a bad idea. Let me just see if they can they'll give me anything for a guy who's probably rated like. Oops. Well, you we could probably put Matt Martin and Stefan Mateau on waivers. And yeah. Milan Mikalchuk. I don't know if I want to give up. Put Mateau on waivers yet. Uh, we'll put McCulloch on waivers then. Nobody's going to Nobody's gonna trade for him. Okay, I'm just going to put some guys in the trading block then. Yeah. Colin Greening on the Marlies. Let's see if I can move with Martin. Matt Hun Hunwick should also maybe go on the trade blog. Andrew Campbell. Mark Andre Cliche. Hunwick. Uh, reading, yeah. uh, I started by age, which kind of got some guys. guys make the most sense. I'm kind of shocked we actually have that many. We can also put Robidon Horton on on the trade block, see if somebody wants that. Yeah, worth a try. Uh, switch to the injury list to do that. I don't think we're going to get much in the way of offers for them unless somebody happens to you know, need to stay above the cap floor and needs that dead cap space that they're eating right now. It could happen. Uh, Zaitsev hasn't been doing that bad. I don't know one off game. I won't go back to benching him yet. Uh, he has another bad one. I think I'm going to put Davidson back in. There's a defenseman currently on the roster. He, uh, or not on the roster, on the protected list named Jesper Lindgren. He's currently day-to-day -day with a broken thigh. So, apparently he's That's awesome. Probably. Yeah, he's probably just coming back from that. Yeah, looks like he's missed, uh, missed a bunch of games this season. Okay, getting back to schedule. We've got a couple of days off before Ottawa. Something that or not there tomorrow, actually. And when is the trading deadline this year? Uh, March 1st, I believe. Should know that thanks to the incessant ads on all the sports stations in Canada. No, no, incessant. No, no, no. Oh, big deal from Washington and uh, LA. Uh, Jake Muzzin. Alright, that needs a little work, but uh, Jake Muzzin and some dra draft pick for Marcus Johansson and a couple of draft picks. One draft pick. Okay, we will play this game against the Senators and hopefully figure out what's going wrong. Uh, oh no, I started. See, this is this is why we need that change in the start screen. I put Enroth in goal. I'm just going to send this one then. <laughs> and yet another 5 to 2 loss. Okay. This time I need to go to the strategy screen and fix that. One other thing we should take a look at doing uh, is signing our impending free agents. There's probably a couple of them we want to at least uh, consider having, uh, yeah, keeping around. Zeiss of Griffith and Brown, but looks of it. Yeah, those guys are at the top. Uh, I guess we also signed Br Brad and Barube. I guess we probably want to keep him too. Yeah, just having with the possible free agent screen going to sort of by potential. Yeah, Brown, what does he want? Uh, he's making 687 now and he wants 1.15 for three years. 
that's there. I'm gonna knock it down a little bit, but I think that's fairly reasonable. Wrong direction. Let's try 1.05 for three years, and uh, he's good enough that I don't have to worry about giving it to, giving him a two-way contract. And Griffith gets an instant easy renewal. He only wants 690. Oh, I mean, I'm going to make that two way though. Pretty easy deal to do. Yep. Give him a reasonable amount on the uh, minor league contract. Zaitsev, despite how he Played recently, probably worth signing 1.13 for over three years, yeah. Were you trying to get rid of Brooks Lake or did you get rid of him? I was just going to see if I could get a draft pick for him, but he was he's injured right now. Uh, he's only out for you a couple could... of weeks, so I think I may be able to do that before the trading deadline, which is, yeah, March 1st. You can trade him to Anaheim probably for about a fifth round pick, I think. Yeah, as soon as he gets healthy, he'll do that, I think. Okay, Anderson and that we're playing Carolina. Let's watch this one. Yeah, maybe I have to look, take a little look at my tactics between periods, because they've got the advantage right now. Uh, and Leo Komarov won nothing, maybe not. Better defensive effort this time. Uh, one shot, or well, okay, I has got two shots to the first eight minutes. Well, that's not bad. Yeah, we're finally playing a little better defensively. Making uh, defensive game ratings are pretty good across the board. Momentum is about even a little in Carolina's favor. It's another thing we made a small change to the way that momentum counter, which affects the uh, tactical uh, ratings, uh, or the tactical uh, the uh, tactical advantage situation in the game. Uh, it's going to pay a little bit more attention to what's happened really recently, as opposed to like 20 minutes back. Uh oh, uh, Van Riemsdyk just got hurt. Uh, that's not good. Uh, oh, what I was going to say before, uh, I didn't finish the thought. Uh, the other new thing we're doing for goaltending is uh, goalies are going to get hot and cold now, so that'll actually be tracked. If they have a good game, their heat rating will go up, and that will... Uh, I won't get into all the details of how it works, but basically if you've got a hot goalie, he's, gonna, he's probably going to play a little better. And Jordan Stahl makes it 1-1. One, one. Um, and if you've got a cold goalie, he's going to play worse. So uh, the net effect is and Zaitsev uh, paying attention gets his first uh, so fourth of the season first of the game makes it 2-1 uh, what was I saying oh, the, uh, the hot and cold thing with goalies uh, it's got the potential to the, the, the effect of being really hot will can boost a goalie up by a couple of star levels in the ratings and oh, the cold can do the same roughly in the opposite direction so it's no longer uh, a matter of just uh, and stall ties it up again. Uh, it's no longer a matter of just looking at your uh, looking at your roster and saying, okay, well this goalie's got uh, is rated slightly better than the other one, and uh, he's not he's not particularly fatigued, so I'm always going to start this guy. Now you have to uh, take into account if he's you know gotten killed the last two or three games and is. Uh, He's gone completely cold. Uh, if your backup can come in and maybe do a little better job because he's, you know, not struggling like the starter is right now, or he would, the the thing I've I've seen in a couple of tests so far is, uh, if a goalie gets in, if a starter gets in trouble in the playoffs, uh, and uh, you see a, a young guy who's maybe not rated as highly as him, 
can get hot and push him out of the way, kind of like uh, what uh, Murray did with the Penguin, the Murray Flurry thing with the Penguins in the playoffs uh, a couple of years ago. Mm. Was it last year? Yeah. Uh, yep, last year's playoffs. Yeah, I mean, it's happened a bunch of times through history. Ken Dryden got his start that way, and Victor Rask makes it 3 2 Carolina. Um, better stop this and make some strategic changes here. Gonna see if I can do anything with the counter and roll as to turn it around. Looks like Carolina has a little more trouble with physical players. The other nice thing about the new uh, the changes we're making in the update, you're going to get a number up here that says exactly what your total tactical score is. So you're not uh, left guessing as to how much uh, these are increasing by and how much you have to, how much farther you have to go to get an advantage over your opponent. And I'm going to make a few more risks and speed it up a little bit. I think that'll be good. Whoops, uh, I forgot I've got uh, Man Reemstike hurt. I'm just going to let the AI do this for now. Let's move loop up one, see if that does anything. I didn't even get the tactical advantage back. I'd go back in and look and figure out exactly how far down I am, but. If I was able to see the score, which you know, if I was in the new version of the game, uh, that will hopefully be out very soon, uh, I'd be able to tell exactly how much I was disadvantaged by, and maybe be able to do a little something more proactive about it. Mm. But nope, down four to two, and uh, what are we on a four-game losing streak now? Uh, playoffs are not looking likely here. Something very close to that, if we're not. Yeah, I think it's four because we had one. We lost the last one in the uh, last week, and we've lost three here now. Oh, Peter Holland pulls us within one. Come on, guys. You can get at least push it into overtime. Had it in front of the net there for a while. And what do you know? Eddie Lack lets it in. Uh, Jake Gardner. Ties the game up, so can we hang on and get this into overtime at least? I'm actually going to jump into the strategy screen for a second and take that risk uh, level down a little bit. Don't need to blow the point now, and Jake Gardner again makes it 5-4 for the Leafs, so we may actually get a win here. Fingers crossed. Wondering if I should go in and not enough time anyhow and get out shot 29-20, but we win 5-4. to four. The Zeitz have the first star, and Gardner the third. So that should have been the other way around, actually. But a pretty good game for us. Don't want to look at how bad the standings are. Yeah, we're still... Oh, we're actually 11 points, I guess. Uh, the Looks like Tampa's been struggling a little bit. Rangers have actually yeah. caught them for the playoff spot. And we're only two points behind Boston, so let's see if we can get past them first. Anything interesting in the news? And Van Riemsdyk, it's only a bruised finger. Again in here, we got a couple of days. He may have to be ready for the Winnipeg game in a couple of days. So, do you want to watch us play the Jets, or? Uh... <laughs> oh, at least part of it, I think. Okay, I'll let you give you that. Doesn't need to be everything. Oh, we got a few contract responses back here. Uh. Hunter Brown doesn't want well, He's not going to sign for us right now. Same with Seth Griffith. Okay, that didn't work out too well. Zaitsev uh, is, at least is renewed. Starting to see a lot more deals in the lead up to the draft. Huh? It's just kind of a big one. Uh, well, not a, a mid-sized one. Uh, Montreal trades Radulov and Bobby Farnham to uh, Tampa for Tyler Johnson. 
that's an interesting trade. How did Johnson end up with Tampa? Or never mind. Never mind. I heard Nashville in my head and then I realized I'm talking <laughs> crazy. It doesn't look like Van Riemsdyk's ready yet, so hopefully we get a health update tomorrow. A lot of waivers going on right now. We need to get somebody cleared. Oh, try sending Lake to Anaheim for a fifth or a sixth round yeah, pick. Yeah, I'm just seeing if he's out of... You can trade him if he's hurt, can't you? Uh, I can, but they're unlikely to go for the trade. Mm. He's only one or two weeks away, so he's going to be back. Uh... No, let's try him now, just for the heck of it. Oh, was it Anaheim that uh, you wanted to try trading with? Yeah. yeah. So alphabetical, there's like. You got a fifth rounder for him? I, I, it said it was likely to go. Although I used a 2017 fifth router because I only had uh, I mean, I'm a first or fifth. I'm going to make it a 2018 sixth rounder and see if that uh, goes anywhere. Yeah, we're going to have to probably make a lineup change. Van Riemsdijk's still hurt and can't play, so show off Mad Martin a little bit before the uh, trading deadline. I'll just I'll actually put him on the third line. Okay. And Hutchinson starting in goal for the Jets, so we might have a little better chance here. <coughs> well, they traded away. Uh, uh oh. What's his name? Hellebuck, I believe, in this game. If yeah. memory serves. I'd have to look. Oh, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right, yeah. And get Pavlik, yeah. And we're out shooting the Jets 8-2 to two so far, so can't complain too much. But Tyler Myers makes it one nothing for the Jets. And as soon as he does that, Zaitsev, who's getting kind of hot now that we was, were thinking about benching him, uh, scores, and it's 1-1. It's funny how every time I mention it, almost every time I mention sitting out somebody, they suddenly take off. <laughs> well, that's the way how it should be. Yeah, I was just... Uh, working on the uh, actual uh, patch notes for the uh, upcoming update uh, before, we, um, before we came on. Uh, I think I'm up to about 130 lines now. It's going to be a big one. Mm -hmm. That will be a big one. Yeah, and we've, there's a lot of uh, little things that have been lingering for a while that we finally got rid of and uh, made a bunch of new changes in addition to the, uh, the goaltending ones um, and the you know, tactical um, international tournaments now have a proper uh, leader screen, so you're going to have to look through the history for that, although we also expanded some of the history for international teams. Uh, and did a bunch of tweaking in historical mode. Uh, I think one of the things we, in uh, the last few, uh, last, I think it's basically since pretty much the start of FHM3, uh, Teams, the the expansion drafts and historical have been a little uh, off. There haven't been enough players available, so we made a change. Actually, a couple of changes there, so there's a full. Uh, you won't have to stop the expansion draft early now. There'll be enough players unprotected. Excellent. Yeah, 
and uh, fixed a long-standing thing with uh, waivers in historical mode that uh, they should operate properly now. Not enough guys were getting, uh, or actually, I, know for in, I think for a lot of years, and literally nobody was waiver eligible. And 4-1 Jets, so I think I've had enough of watching this. 6-1 uh, Jets final score. So are you happy now? We got a shot for 24 Apparently how Ecstatic. important Van Riemsdyk is to us. Who knew? Who knew it would all be about Van Riemsdyk? Okay, just waiting for an answer back on that Brooks Lake deal, and hopefully we'll be able to take advantage of the roster shuffling, even if we don't make a trade on the trading deadline. Some guys will probably get uh, moved around, and a few people will go on to waivers. So I might be able to grab something there. And I'm going to take a look in a second. I'm curious to see where Burroughs wound up. Yeah, kind of another attempt to make another fairly big deal. Uh, Brian Boyle and JT Brown for the Flyers for Ivan Provorov. Oh, wow. That's that's a huge deal. Okay, we will have Burroughs. <coughs> have that nice handy search feature. Oh, Burroughs wasn't even a Canuck anymore. Uh, he was <laughs> moved to the Kings at the start of the season. They traded him for Tom Gilbert, and he did wind up clearing waivers, and he's down playing for Ontario, the American League. All right. Ontario, California, not to be confused with some sort of generic uh, provincial Ontario team in the AHL. Former ECHL team. Yeah, one of the ones they swapped around when the uh, AHL uh, moved to California. Okay, good Van Riemsdyk. Is almost ready. Uh, what have we got a game here? Oh, we got the Rangers tonight. I'm just going to sim that one. And hopefully Van Riemsdyk will be ready after the next one. Or for the next one. Oh, we got a point. 4-3 shootout loss. Well, better than nothing. Probably not enough to do a lot for our playoff hopes. Uh, Where are we sitting now? Uh, way too far back. I'll check in a second, but Anaheim says no way to the Brooks-like thing, so... Really? Let's take that out and... Take the worst possible pick, a 2019 seventh rounder. Okay, they are all right with it. And right. they did let us uh, complete the trade, uh, like for a seventh rounder. So now it's time to start watching the waiver wire between games. Nothing on it right now, though. Oh, well, another thing that's coming in the patch in this screen, the, uh, I wanted to do this for a while, the, uh, the schedule screen with the uh, scores on it. It now says there's a there's a column right here that will announce whether it's a win loss, overtime loss, shootout loss, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you don't have to look and figure out okay which team is home, which team is away, what was the score, and you can see it in glance whether you wonder whether or not you won or lost games. Always annoyed me slightly that you couldn't do that, but I think uh, something we'll be considering for FHM4 is a much better uh, schedule and calendar screen. Excellent. And is now Van Riemsdyk still isn't ready. Go one more game with this lineup against Montreal. So they start their backup and we come out of that one with a three to two win. Vorchek check the first star. Uh, nice game from Mitch Marner. 
So Dodge gonna check the standings. Uh, uh, problem is Tampa Bay with all those trades start to pick up two, and we are now, if I'm counting right, 14 points back of a playoff spot, and they've got a game in hand. Only one point behind the Bruins now, though. I'm gonna take a quick look at our uh, stats. Uh, yeah, Van Riemsdyk was actually our third leading scorer, so that's why that hurt so much. We're not, we're not getting the production that the real Leafs are this season out of uh, Kadri in particular. Yeah. Lupul is back for seven games and has not had a single point so far. So apparently he wasn't the key to turning our season around. No, but we could probably go and make a bunch of trades here in a couple of days if the trade deadline hits. Okay, uh, Martin Marincin uh, just got hurt, uh, jammed his finger. So it looks like Zeitz have a safe for a while, and Brandon Davidson gets back into the lineup. Oh, I should uh, a couple of days off here. Hopefully, we get Van Riemsdyk back, and we can just do a total overhaul of the lineup because we got to turn something around here. And maybe something interesting pops up on waivers between now and then. And Reamsteak is back. Good. this year is it no no it is not so 27th a couple more days to the uh trading deadline Let's see if we maybe get an offer somewhere in here Logan Shaw on waivers from Florida, but yeah, you know, got a borderline AHL or no point in picking him up. No, oh, that's weird. The game thinks it is a leap year. That's funny. Might be a little bug in there. We'll have to check that. Well, if there's a Summer Olympics, that means it's a leap year. There's not a Summer Olympics. Okay, Van Riemsdyk's back. So... Does Martin go out? I think I'm going to put my toe in. And uh, put Lupul back on the bench because he's been useless so far. Davidson is in. Let's see what the AI wants to do with these lines. Hmm. And Reamstake on the third. Cool. That's pretty much pretty similar to how I already had him. Now he wants Mateau on the. I'm gonna swap Connor Brown and Mateau. Another change in the uh, update. Uh, the contributions the bottom line guys make to tactics are going to be reduced a little bit. Uh, so your your top couple of lines will have a lot more influence on the overall tactical score than uh, your than the guys on the fourth line. It's a little too easy to cheat and uh, let them, uh, particularly on the fourth line, because you've got uh, free selection of roles there. You could uh, get the tactical advantage back by making changes to the bottom couple of lines. Now you're kind of pushed to do it at the top lines if you want to get the maximum effectiveness out of your changes. Okay, so Sharks, let's try simming this. And it's a 4-2 Leaf win. Well, Jake Gardner does get the first star this time. 
So standings wise that puts us past the Bruins finally. There's a, I think a big bunch of teams, We're actually 10th in the conference, but there's one, two, three, four, five teams separated by one point. So you see we gotta somehow find 14 points in the next uh, 20 games. It's not the craziest thing, but not very not likely. Our chances. Let's see if we get any trade offers on the deadline day tomorrow. And a bunch of news popped up, so either some deals got done or we got something there. It's taking a little longer to advance to the start of the next month because there's a lot going on with the uh, AI at the moment. Uh, no, we didn't get any uh, offers, looks like. Do have a development report, though. Soshnikov coming along nicely. Nylander as well. Uh, Lupul continues to decline. The injured guy is still getting hurt. Uh, Mikulak. Yeah, oh, Tyler Bozak slipping a little bit. That's not great. I think it's time to start throwing guys away. Just going to take a look at the Marlies to see if anybody uh, jumped a uh, half point or so in ability. Doesn't look like it, though. Uh, Captain has done pretty well since we sent him down 30 points in 46 games. And Sashnikov, is, well, he's doing okay, not spectacular. So, let me check the wave. I was going to say, uh, I saw C. Brown on the waivers and thought, well, wait, we didn't put San Connor Brown down, but uh, it's Chris Brown from the Rangers. Not to be confused with uh, Chris Brown, the singer. <laughs> um, but I'm not interested I, in picking up either one of those guys on waivers, so. I got Lupo picked up, if that, or traded him away. Where'd you uh, trade him to? I traded him to Boston, along with a prospect for a fourth round pick. Let's see if I can pull that off. Uh... I traded him with, and I'll just check here, Dakota Joshua for a 2017 fourth round pick. Oh, the rights to uh, Joshua, okay. Yep. And they gave, uh, was it 2017 fourth rounder? Yep. They got two, is it theirs or Nashville's? Uh, I think it was Nashville's I got, but Either or. Okay, let's offer it. Yep, they like it. Finalize the trade. Also, you can trade Andrew Campbell to Dallas for a fourth round pick. If we're trying to clear some protect guys. Yeah, not a bad idea. Uh, seeing if I can dump off someone else here. The LA Kings have a shockingly large amount of payroll gap. We got any salary we need to move? Oh, it says they're. We're out from under Michelex deal at the end of this year, so there's no point in moving him.
Well, it depends what you can get from McCulloch. One and a half stars. I'm guessing it's not much, but let's see. Uh, let's see if the sharks want him back. Wait, wait, he was with the sharks? Yeah, that's where it started. Oh, we had like those three or four, 40 or 50, 50 point or so seasons. Okay. Then Ottawa and then Elise. Oh, I remember Ottawa. I just did not remember. Gonna try for a third round, but I don't think they'll do it. Yep, uh, they will never accept that deal, so so much for that. But let's move it down to a fifth rounder. Still nothing. They've got a Hawk seventh rounder. Let's see if they want that. Okay, they'll. Looks well balanced. Okay, they'll do that. So at this point, we're just scraping up late round draft picks, and we need to. Well, uh, that's uh, something to make up for that spot we just opened up. Well, we can also trade Colin Greening away for a six round pick. Two? Uh, no, Nashville. Now, maybe a seventh round pick here, let's see. For a 2019 seventh round pick. I didn't even look how the Marlies are doing. Are we <laughs> destroying their playoff run here? Uh, it doesn't matter. 2019 seventh round pick, did you say? Yeah. For greening, I added uh, the rights to Mason Marchand as well. And they will make the for a seventh round pick. Yeah, half a star guy doesn't make a big difference. Well, we continue to chip away at our contracts we don't need. Yep. Uh, take a look at the American League standings. <laughs> that's just oh yeah, the Marley, Marlies that. were in first place in the uh, in their division and setting up for a playoff run, and we just I think we got rid of their captain, one of the uh, uh, alternates, and uh, a couple of other guys that they were kind of <laughs> depending on. So. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. It's about the future. It's not about the now. And we now we need to call somebody up from him too, unless we're well. We got to take one, bring up one. Uh... Well, let's hold on. Let's see who's available as a free agent right now. Probably nobody at this point in the season. Nobody interesting. We could sign Louis LeBlanc. Bring Keaton Ellerby in for a short run. Eh, it's all one half stars. So I'd rather bring up somebody from our minor leagues and uh, give him a little. For a guy who's there. worried about disrupting our minor leagues or before. <laughs> well, yeah, but now it's well, a good cause. I'm. Uh, just we'll just take just everybody. Like analyzing them. I'm, I'm bringing up somebody to. Uh, Captain already has his shot, so we'll leave him down. I'm gonna bring up Sashnikov. He had all. He had like uh, three. Uh, uh, stat improvements in the last update. Well, I can give him a week of trying. He's, he's only had like 30 points for him this year, so it's not like I'm stealing a first liner for him from him. Okay, what does he make of this? Oops, have to dress him first. Should we try and trade somebody else? Unless we get an offer uh, when I continue the day, I think that's it for the trading. So will it stop it if you get an offer? I believe so, yeah. Okay. I know I don't want to put Sashtikov at center and Holland on the wing, but that should be the other way around. Take a quick look at the trade block to see if there's huh, David Backus is on the trade block in my game. If he wasn't on a five year contract, he'd be interesting to pick up. Yeah, 
Yep. Uh, check the news. Oh, it's just all of our trades there. And continue on tomorrow and see what happens. movement or at least discussion going on because it's taking a little while to advance the next day and actually we get hit with save right on top of that. Oh, uh, that which reminds me, another thing we're doing with the uh, new update, uh, we've added rolling saves so you can have a couple of backup copies of your save uh, without uh, having to do it the whole uh, manually renaming everything. And we've also added a couple of safeguards to the saving process so it's a lot harder now to uh, lose a save to a crash uh, if you if your game crashes or you shut it down in the middle of a save uh, it won't finish the uh, finish writing the save you will it will still keep the previous version of the save intact so that should hopefully uh, help with a lot of people uh, who are you know if you get a power outage or something in the middle of a save uh, that will not kill your game now permanently uh, some minor stuff, uh, Washington, Canucks, a couple of minor leaguers, uh, Cameron Gauntz from Pittsburgh to Montreal for Paul Byron, Casey Nelson from Buffalo to Chicago, uh, well, Lyndon Vey from the Flames to the Stars for Antoine Roussel, so Flames get a little tougher. Oh, and another big one I can see coming up, uh, Dennis Weidman uh, from Calgary to Tampa for Eric Condra. And Buffalo, Tampa makes another one here. What's that one? Corey Conacher and... Oh, then Tampa moves Weidman right away for Conacher and Weidman for Johan Larson to Buffalo. Mm. And, oh, Flames Oilers deal. Uh, Anton Lander for the rights to Brian Hickey. Uh, not a big deal, but kind of a quiet trade deadline. Uh, the, the Lightning did a whole bunch. So they're trying real hard to hold on to that playoff spot, I guess. A very now Steve Eiserman thing to do. Yeah, now 16 points uh, ahead of us, so I'm not really liking our chances. And we got a game against the Kings here, so I think oh, we will play that. And... Oh, I'm going to check the waiver wire before this. i got to do that when we get to the end of this. So we'll play that, and that'll get us close to the end of the broadcast. Um, oops. Game stoppage is off. I'm trying to think of any other big things we've got coming in the patch. There's so much stuff that we've done that I forget. It's and some of it's been in for a couple of weeks now. I've forgotten about it. Uh, a lot of, like I said, a lot of the smaller, you know, annoying little uh, things we've been able to clean up. Uh, made a few changes to long-term uh, player development and uh, particularly in the for younger players which uh, was a bit of a problem with the way the CHL leagues were developing guys a little too fast and it was too fast relative to the other uh, leagues in the game other like non-playable junior leagues in the game which was uh, making Canada in particular in the US to a lesser extent really dominant in uh, all the international junior tournaments after you go like 20 30 years out and Canada was having these like eight or nine year runs of winning every tournament and we're down to nothing for the Kings already by the way but just the way it should be yeah, yeah the way it should be but apparently the non-Canadians have some sort of an issue with <laughs> that with it being like that. <laughs> but yeah no we made some changes and now Canada still does very well but it's not uh, total domination like it was before Russians are doing a lot better now. Uh, see, I said in the last test, uh, Sweden is uh, much more of a contender now. And I also tinkered with the uh, player generation levels for a few countries a little bit too. Nothing major, but uh, toned down Canada slightly. And uh, although within Canada, Ontario will probably produce uh, more good players now. We had a bit of an issue with uh, the number of draft uh, prospects coming out of the OHL wasn't quite 
not uh, correct relative to the Q and the W. And so they've, they've tried to fix that a little bit. I'm not sure how far it's gone. Uh, yeah, we are not winning this one. Three and up and down, three nothing. Let's just... I'm just going to throw it wide open with the uh, tactics. Very high risk. Very high tempo. And let's see if that does anything for us. Probably get us buried, but... Well, it looks like we're going to seem to have it in there in a little bit more. And at least they're not scoring on us anymore. That's better. Yeah, we're getting chances. 20 shots now, and the uh, problem is we're up against Quick, who isn't hurt in this game. Well, he wasn't always going to be hurt. Yeah, it makes a huge difference in how the Kings do. And Toffman makes it 4-0. Uh, I think we got one more Kings goal. I'm just going to sim the rest of this. <laughs> Maybe we can bounce back. Big third period. Come on, guys. Fingers crossed. Nope, 4 nothing in the second, so I'm not terribly optimistic we're going to see a big comeback. Kings seem to be dominating again. Uh, weird thing is our game ratings aren't that bad. Nobody is particularly off. I mean, we're getting shots and everything. We're doing well. And, uh, there we go. Mitch Marner finally breaks the shutout at least, so we're not totally humiliated. We just don't seem to get anything past quick. And Anderson went in. Uh, well, I can't blame Anderson too much for getting out shot. 33-24. totals really spiked up after I opened up, but yeah, Johansson, who they got from the Capitals, uh, finishes us off, so I'm not going to watch any more of this 5-1 at that point, 5-1 final. And I think that is pretty close to being the end of our playoff hopes, 16 games, 19 games left, 16 points down. waivers. And actually a whole bunch of waiver claims I missed. Nice going. Yeah, nobody on I missed all of them. <laughs> Anyone good? Uh, not particularly minor leaguers. David Warsawski, uh, Garrett Wilson, Tom Kunakel. See, I sim it and we win, 3-2. to two. <laughs> Of course. That's how that's supposed to work, right? Yeah, okay, let me just get us up to our next game, whatever that may be. Wings of the seventh, so I've got a couple of days to sim here. Um, I think you, you want to wind it up, Adam? Uh, yep, sure. Yeah, okay, I'm just going to get this up for the next day. Sure. Uh... Thank you for tuning in to another Franchise Hockey Manager 3 stream. We stream every Wednesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern on twitch.tv slash OOTP developments. Our streams are archived on our YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash OOTP developments as well. You can reach out and talk to us on our Facebook 
Facebook.com slash Franchise Hockey Manager. You can find us on Twitter at Franchise Hockey, or you can come on down to our official website, which is OOTPdevelopments.com, and you can pre-order the brand new Out of the Park 18, which comes out next month? Next, I think, uh, is the target? Question. No, not that soon. <laughs> well, the next month is March now, so I think it's... Coming uh, February, out. um... Uh, I guess, yeah, I can't remember what the exact release date for it is. In the next while, anyways, let's say that. Very soon, very soon. Yes. Still testing. And if you're watching, if you're watching this on YouTube, well, I'm sorry, you just missed our fifty percent off sale. So. Yeah, well, possibly they might be. They may watch it later tonight or tomorrow. Yeah. But remember, it's a, tomorrow, Tuesday, the or Thursday, the second of February, last full day for the All Star Sale, fifty percent off. So if you've been thinking about getting the game, uh, the time to do it is now. Absolutely. And I think we will leave us there. 16 points out of a playoff spot with 18 games to go. Not terribly promising, but who knows? Maybe we can make it. So we will be back next week uh, with... Uh, I think it'll be the historical game. I'm not sure if we're going to be continuing the same Ottawa one. No. I think we have to finish think... that off there. We've pretty much missed the playoffs in that one as well, so... So far, the two uh, big uh, games we started have been massive failures. <laughs> yeah. But maybe we can start a new one soon and uh, turn that around a little bit. So thank you, everybody. And uh, that is it for this week. And uh, we will see you in a week or so.